Hey guys, we're here in Long Beach on Belmont Pier and I'm really excited to be showing you this bike today. It's the Charger 3. Now, I've kind of had to keep it a secret for a little while because it's a mid-season release. It's actually releasing on February 1st, uh, 2020. And we've done some reviews for the 2020 bikes earlier this year. We did the Supercharger 2, the Super Delight, the Delight, uh, the new loads, and there's many other updates, but this one uh, I'm particularly excited about, and actually a lot of our staff is excited. Three of our team members in Brooklyn actually are planning to purchase the, this bike for themselves, so it kind of gives you an indication of how special it might be. So this is the Charger 3, which would give you indication that there were previous versions of the Charger as well, which is true. I mean, we've had the the Charger, which I guess has really been in Reese & Mueller's lineup for quite some time, and then they changed to what's called the new Charger, which we've had uh, up until now. It's still available largely. And now we have the Charger 3, totally redone. You have a new integration of the battery, new motor, and overall, uh, many great updates. We also have the addition of now having the roll-off hub available, which uh, I think many people are going to be really excited about that new option. The Charger always has been and, and will continue to be with the Charger 3 available in a standard frame as well as what's called the mixed frame, which we're looking at today. And the mixed frame just has that lower top tube. The standard frame has the standard uh, top tube. and. Both styles are available in three colors. So the mixed frame, this is called the Storm Blue. It's also available in Sunset, which is a color that we have also shot previously with the load, so we can check that out, and as well as a, a white color. Now the standard frame is available in white, this Storm Blue, as well as what's called Caribbean Blue, which is kind of a lighter blue, and I think that color is uh, really nice as well. So this new stem really gives you a lot of flexibility. You can have it in kind of the slam down position, give you a pretty sporty ride position, um, or you can angle it up a little bit more. This kind of would be more moderate, I guess you could say. So not completely forward, but slightly upright, but you can pull it back even further to have a really relaxed upright positioning on the bike. So now the, the bike comes with a couple different saddle and tire setups and stuff like that. This particular bike that we're checking out today is a GH version, which has the same tires as the GT, but the saddle and pedals uh, are a bit different on it. So this one uh, is kind of a wider saddle. It's made to accommodate heavier riders. But if you opt for the GX version, you're gonna get a slightly different saddle, a little bit more sporty. Uh, and the standard one is just kind of a, a comfort, moderately comfort uh, saddle, which works really well and quite popular. All the bikes are gonna come with the suspension seat post. Now, this bike is a hardtail, so it doesn't have the rear suspension, but it has the suspension seat post. But there are other bikes that Reese & Mueller makes that do come with rear suspension. The most close bike to this with rear suspension would be the Delight. So also a single battery, but the addition of the rear suspension. And then Reese & Mueller has bikes that have two batteries for that extended range. The hardtail version, similar to this, would be called the Supercharger 2. And then the full suspension one would be called the Super Delight. Now the bike's available in several different frame sizes. The mixed version, which this is, this is actually a 49 centimeter, kind of the medium size. It's available in 46, 49, and 53 centimeter. The standard frame is available 46, 49, 53, and now they've added a 56 centimeter. So if you're a really tall rider, that 56 centimeter bike will be a really great fit. For shorter riders, 46 is gonna work well. However, I think if you're under 5'4", 5'3", we might be starting to push it a little bit, especially with the suspension seat post. You gotta consider, we got a couple of inches there. Now, without the suspension seat post, I think we could probably go down to probably around 5'2", 5'1", depending on what your inseam is. So if you have some questions about that, you know, just reach out to us. I'll be happy to help you know, figure out what might work for you. Uh, that sort of thing. So for the tires on this bike, the GT and the GH are gonna both come with the Schwabi Supermoto X, really one of the most popular tires in our shop. It's a 27.5 by 2.4. And really the great thing about this tire is it's so versatile. You can ride it on the street, 
you can ride it off-road. I mean, some really soft terrain, you might find like it doesn't have as much traction, but for most things that people encounter, it works quite well. It's also a balloon tire, so you can run it at a bit lower pressure. So if you want it to be a bit more comfortable, you could run at a lower pressure, or if you want to be, you know, really as efficient as possible, you know, running at the higher pressure will work well. So you could check out the treads here. Um, you know, not super aggressive, but but just perfect for that all round sort of tire. Now, if you are riding a bit more off-road uh, or looser terrain and that sort of thing, you might want to consider opting for what's called the GX version. Now, that's kind of the grand crossover as opposed to the grand touring with the GT. And that tire has more tread to it, so it's called the Rock Razor. The one downside is that the Rock Razor doesn't have as much puncture protection. Now, in our shop, what we found a lot of success doing is taking that tire and running it with some sort of a tire liner. Now, we really like this product called Tannis, and eventually I'll do a review on it, but it's a foam tire liner. It works really well to keep the comfort of the tire, and but still improve the puncture protection. The Supermoto X on its own has excellent puncture protection. I think you'll find that works quite well. Now the wheels on here, it's a 35 millimeter rim with a double wall aluminum, has nice reinforced eyelets on here. Really nice setup. The through axle up front, and we're running a Suntour Ion fork on here with 100 millimeters of travel, which is really perfect for this sort of application for Really, it's kind of a do anything, go anywhere sort of bike. Uh, really nice fenders on here, 65 millimeters wide. It's a plastic fender, but it's reinforced with metal. And I, I think that works really well. We found them to hold up uh, quite nicely. Now, I just wanted to show a little bit more details about the suspension. This is an air fork, which means that it's adjustable uh, based on the amount of air pressure that you put in it. If we open up this little cap here, you actually have what's called a Schrader valve, uh, same as you often use on tires, but the difference is it goes to a very high pressure. And one of the great things about the bike is it comes with a pump to specifically set the suspension up. Now you're going to want to set the suspension based on your body weight and position, and you set what's called the sag. And you can add or subtract air pressure here, and what you want is when you're in your normal riding position, you see this little uh, ring here? We use this to set the sag, and then if we push down on the suspension, you want that sag to be right about here, somewhere 25, 30% of the overall travel of the suspension. That's gonna put you in the active suspension travel, so you're gonna be able to utilize it properly. One other detail really important about the suspension, it has what's called a lockout. Now, I don't find myself using it very often, but it is sometimes useful. Climbing a really big hill, you wanna be as efficient as possible. If you don't have the suspension locked out, if you're pedaling really hard, what might end up happening is you put some of your energy into the suspension as you're pedaling. So you're kind of putting your energy there instead of into the drivetrain. But if you wanted to lock the suspension out, you just kind of turn this remote here, which is, uh, which is a nice feature and a lot of people appreciate that. Not something I use so much, but uh, certainly some people uh, might want to use that. Now, since this is a Vario version, it's going to come with the Enviolo N380 continually variable transmission. And it's continually variable because there's no specific indexes to it, like you would find on the Touring version, which is the traditional derailleur, or the Roloff version, which is a 14-speed internally geared hub. Now, this, you can shift the gears up on the handlebars, and it just adjusts almost like a volume dial where the other versions, it's more indexed. Now, one of the exciting updates for 2020 is that the charger is now available with the roll-off hub. So it has the roll-off E14 with electronic shifting. Previously, you've only found this hub on some other bikes, whether it be the Homage, the Delight, now Super Delight, and the Supercharger. So I think many people are going to be excited to have that option available on the Charger and Charger Mix. So if you don't really need that very long range of the dual battery uh, Supercharger, uh, the Charger is a great way to go. And the Vario version is going to be paired with the belt, similar to the Supercharger. And the Touring version is going to come with a traditional derailleur and chain.
So another really exciting update for the Charger 3 is this new motor. So generation four Bosch motors on here, it's available with the standard versions. It's gonna have by default the CX motor, which is an amazing performance motor generally used for mountain bikes, but recent Mueller specs it on many of their bikes because it's a really well-performing motor. Lightweight, really efficient, works really well when pedaling without power, uh, which is a slight improvement from the previous version because they've eliminated what's called the reduction gear inside the motor. So previously you might've seen the motors have that smaller chain ring up front, but now they have the standard size chain ring because they removed that reduction gear. Some other details about the system. Now, if you see HS in the name, that means high speed. So it's gonna come with the high speed motor. A really exciting update for the high-speed motor is now it's available with 75 newton meters of torque, which is a really nice improvement from the previous version at 63 newton meters. So you're not going to have to sacrifice torque if you wanted to opt for that high-speed motor. And the way the motor performs is a bit different as well. With the high-speed motor, when you go over 20 miles an hour, you actually get more assistance. So it makes it much easier to get up and maintain that higher speed of 28. But I wanted to show the motor from the other side. So I'm gonna flip the bike around. We can see it a little bit better. So now from this side, you can see the motor a little bit better, but it really uh, integrated into the frame quite nicely. Uh, and I'm pretty excited about that design. I think the overall sleekness of this bike is really improved by the way they integrate the, the motor and the battery as well. You have these little heat fins here uh, or, um, you know, just to, be able to dissipate the heat from the motor, which uh, I found it doesn't really get uh, very hot, but it performs really well. I should explain a little bit more of how the motor works specifically. It uses a technology called pedal assist. So basically you pedal the bike and it amplifies your pedaling. So it has three sensors. One sensor sensing how fast you're pedaling, another sensing how hard you're pedaling, and then third, the last sensor is on the rear wheel and it senses how fast the bike is going overall. Based on that information, it's gonna provide assistance. Now you can ride with no assistance, just like a normal non-electric bike. And these new motors perform better than most in that regard because there's really no resistance there. The first level of assistance is 60% and the top level of assistance goes up to 340%. We'll talk about that a bit more when we show the display, but at that point, you really have to work very little to get the bike going at a pretty fast speed. For the battery on the bike, they use the Bosch 500 watt hour power tube and it's really well integrated into the frame. They did a slight change to the design from last year where they're installing a cover onto the battery as opposed to a cover that, use, that connects to the frame, but works really well and I think it improves the sleekness of the design. Now the battery is lockable on the frame and you can charge the battery on or off the bike usually takes about four hours to charge the battery fully. Now, if you wanted to charge the battery on the bike, you could use this little port here, but uh, if you remove the battery, use uses the same style port. The Charger 3 is available with three different display options. By default, it comes with the Intuvia display, which is kind of simple. Uh, it's probably Bosch's most popular display, a pretty basic information, but there's two different upgrade options. This one happens to have the Kiox display, which I'm gonna show you the functions. Uh, the functions between them are pretty similar and we have some videos that go into the details of these displays a little bit more, but I'll show you the basics on this one. So to turn it on, you're just gonna tap the power button here. It takes a couple seconds, it'll turn on. By default, it's gonna be in off mode, but you can change the assistance level by hitting the plus button here on the thumb pad. If you go into the first level of assistance, it's a 60% assistance that's in eco mode. Tour mode's 140%, sport mode is 240%, and turbo mode is 340%, up a little bit from the previous generation two version of the Bosch motor. Now you can also see as you change the assistance level, the color changes as well. You can get some other details about the display here. So you have the what time, the assistance level, the lights are on. Right now the lights are always on on this bike, but you can set them to make it optional that you can change them on or off. On this high speed bikes, by default, it's always going to be on. Then we have the battery percentage here, the units of measurement, which is miles per hour. 
and then on the bottom we can actually cycle through some of the different screens. Now again I won't go too much into this but you can get some basic details. The clock, uh, the range based on the assistance level, this is really helpful. As you change the assistance level, if I go up to turbo mode, you're going to see 33 miles of range which is pretty great. Then I go to some of the other details, you have trip distance, trip time, power and cadence. This is going to show how much power you're putting in and how fast your cadence is, like as in how fast your pedals are moving as you're riding. And that's a, that's a nice feature. And then you get some other details, average speed, max speed. And then this screen just has more of those details in that one little uh, screen. Now you also notice here the BPM heart rate. Now you can actually connect a heart rate monitor. You can't use all heart rate monitors, uh, like an Apple Watch or something like that won't necessarily function, but you can use ones that use a um, Bluetooth uh, connectivity. And then you can see also, you can get details, calories, you can also connect your phone. They make an app, it's called the eBike Connect app. And then you can go into the overall settings. Again, I'm not going to go too much into that, but um, that's, uh, that's the basics on the Kiox display. The smartphone hub that uses the Kobe technology, that would mount in a similar position, have many of these same functions, but expand on that to allow you to access many of your phone's functions, which include the ability to control your GPS as navigation. You can also control uh, your music, uh, make phone calls, all sorts of stuff. So pretty cool setup there. The one other detail I want to go over on the display is the ability to activate what's called walk function. So you would tap this walk button here on the top. So I hit that walk button and then if I hold the plus button that will activate the walk assist. And that's really great if you got the bike loaded up and you want to walk around with it um, or say you want to walk it up a hill or something like that. That's, that's a good function for that. Some other really exciting updates for this Charger 3 is this new rack. So the new rack has a capacity up to 65 pounds, up from the approximate 45 pounds of the previous version. So now you can easily accommodate a child seat or really load this thing up with cargo. It also has the MIC adapter here. So if you wanted to use different bags or baskets that use the MIK or MIC um, attachment plate, you can do that easily. Same Bibia strap that's available on many of the other uh, recent Mueller bikes there with some other uh, points to grab the additional strap down here as well. We also have the ABIS 5750 Shield Plus frame lock, which will give you the ability to lock the rear wheel and you also have the ability to add a additional chain lock to, to this setup as well, which is quite nice. Another new detail for the Charger 3 is the dual fabric water bottle. So you have the really nice attachment point. They just attach really simply onto the frame. Now we do also have the option to add a front rack similar to what you found on the Supercharger 2 and the Delight, Super Delight, and so we'll show that as well. For the brakes on here, we have the Magura MT4 in the rear and MT5 up front, and really powerful braking, nice actuation. On the high speed versions, we're also going to have the addition of the tail light. So, up front, we have the Magura MT5 quad piston calipers, really heavy duty rotors, front and rear, 180 millimeters. And the rear caliper is a dual piston that's the MT4, which works quite well and it's a nice balance between the front and rear braking power. Well, thanks so much for checking out the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Really excited about this bike as I shared before. Um, and yeah, I think it's going to be a popular one. I mean, so many different options. It's going to be great for many different people. If you have any questions about it, I know I covered a lot. I hope it wasn't too much information. But if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below or just reach out. We're always happy to help. And I look forward to seeing you in the future. So see you soon.